And guess what? I'm not even pushing it. I'm like really frustrated right now. Do you see this? This is next level. This is AMD Ryzen Review 3600X on $40 motherboard. The cheapest one they can find that supports AM4 socket. Gigabyte A320M-S2H. I'm gonna show you around the motherboard, its features, as well as overclocking potential on brand new six core 12 thread Ryzen CPU. On one of the oldest and cheapest motherboards out there. Memory settings, temperatures, Cinebench numbers. We're gonna cover pretty much everything you need to know about the platform and the motherboard itself, that if it works. First, I'd like to start by introducing each component we're working with today, the CPU itself. Oh yeah, AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. CPU retails for $250 US. Not the most powerful chip in the lineup, yet most likely to be one of the popular ones. Alongside with Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 5 2600X that goes for a nice discount. This thing packs six core 12 threads with base frequency of 3.8 gigahertz and single core boost of 4.4. Important to note, that only single-threaded applications could benefit from. It was mostly useless these days. After the memory, we are rocking just kill 3200 megahertz. CL16 memory doesn't focus. CL16 memory. It served us well over the years and should not be a bottleneck as performance difference between 3200 and 3600 is negligible, considering how much money you can save. I don't think any of us buying Ryzen 5 gonna go all out on the memory. Let me introduce the motherboard again. Gigabyte A320M-S2H was the cheapest board we can get at the time of buying it. It's micro ATX board with four plus two phase power delivery that could be a problem if we decide to overclock third gen Ryzen. Let's unbox everything, put it on a test bench and see if it runs. I have a feeling. But before we do so, let me remind you to subscribe, as its multi-part video featuring Ryzen 5 3600X. We'll be testing it on X470 as well as 570, and we'll find this guy a real nice home where he belongs. It's definitely he. Motherboard is probably she, but... This is your tiny VRM setup. All bunch boards, your typical motherboard stuff. These ones, HDMI, DVI, and VGA, are made for APUs. Once updated, this motherboard is not gonna support these. If you have APUs, just don't update the BIOS, you'll be fine. Told you it's a dude. See this pre-applied thermal paste? Garbage. Nice and clean. This is what I use to clean off the paste. QD contact cleaner. Great stuff. But George, the paste is gone. What are you gonna do? Well, I gotta use Cryonaut. Apply just a smudge. Good. And this is the reason why I'm mounting a CPU on the table, not on the bench. This little plate, once you remove these brackets, will fall off. So when you're in a test bench, there's no way to secure it from the behind to install the cooler. As expected. We need to flash BIOS that has Ryzen 3000 microcode. How do you do BIOS update without working CPU? You use QFlash Plus. We need QFlash Plus that unfortunately this board doesn't have. It's a USB port that is marked in different color that supports USB thumb drive readout to push new code to the BIOS. Now you gotta find 1000 and 2000 series CPU that can push the updates. We have Ryzen 2600, let's see if it works. All right, we install Radeon 5 5600X, see if it boots. Oh, no power. There we go. It seems like the BIOS version is F30. The website says that we need to update to F30 
8, 36, 34. And then update to F40 to get support for Ryzen 3000 series. You reboot and then keep smashing end, end, update bias. So let's try F40 right away, see if it works. Invalid bias image. Update bias, F32, click enter, and then press to start. Doing it. It's taking a while. While it's updating, let's talk about the motherboard. Motherboard supports M.2 slot, one slot by 16 PCIe Express, and then two slots by one PCIe Express in the old third gen PCIe Express. 95. Okay, let's go to BIOS. Version is F32. But again, we need F40, so let's, let's proceed with that update. This is the most important update for this board ever, really. Hopefully we'll get all kinds of cool features like Ryzen 3000. Check the bias. F40. Moment of truth. Will it boot? Oh, power. And the fan. Moment of truth 2.0. Will it boot? I'm a little nervous. Okay, okay. It just shut off. It's power cycling. Power cycling, it's fine, it's normal. Oh, 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 oh. Base clock 3800 megahertz. Nice. Third gen processor on the first gen board. Why don't you look at that? Ryzen 5 3600X. Cinnabon Char 15 run with nothing touched in bias. And uh, we're gonna look at the temperatures and the frequencies and uh, voltage. Now the fans are ramping up, that's good. 4092, temps are 78 degrees Celsius. Core voltage is 1.325. So that's the number and Cinnabon number is 1605. Now this is the brand new processor and we need some brand new drivers. So let's update those chipset drivers, shall we? Ryzen power plant, AMD SM bus driver, AMD PCIe. So we're not gonna do GPU. And the score is 1602, so within the margin of error. There is something else I'd like to mention when working with brand new Ryzen 3000 series, there are a few caveats. First is PCIe Express Gen 4 which gives us a little to no benefit when it comes to gaming and the current software. Sure, you can make an argument that SSD performance should improve with new SSD controllers. We may see a change in the future with the release of new consoles like PlayStation 5 and Xbox something, but as of today, there is a little to no benefit going from SATA SSD to M.2 and VME SSD on PCI Express Gen 4 when it comes to loading games. So unless you have a heavy creative workload, you would not see any difference. Maybe a tiny bit. So like everybody else said on the internet, instead of buying X570, get X470 or B450. M.2 slot is also present here, which is a great addition for a small form factor. Less cable management. And it's great for small cases, which you should have. Buying this board, it's made for a small case. Think about it. It's small, it's micro. Ryzen 5 3600X, just like the rest of the lineup, brings some memory improvements. Your memory controller sits inside. It's part of IO die. It's not outside, it's inside. Memory is another story on this processor. Infinity fabric inside the chip that connects all the CC access, aka chiplets, as well as IO die will scale with the memory clock. And it would be at one to one ratio up to 37, 33 megahertz. I'm lazy. We could go in and decrease all these little numbers. Cast ladies. Would you sacrifice stability of the system for one, two, yeah, about 2% improvement. Listen, it's your choice. If you want to do this, make sure you just benchmark everything, every game and every application you have. Uh, answer. So the previous score we had without the memory overclock was 1605, I think. Once you look at that, 1605. Nothing has changed. I was just saying that, you know, rise in the memory over. Infinity Fabric overclock is a must on these chips. And typically it would be a half of what DDR frequency you have. 3200 megahertz. So Infinity Fabric should be 1600. FCLK frequency, 1600. Just don't explode on me, okay? 
So Infinity Fabric overclocks 1600 and Memory overclock to 3200 CL16 does not give you good results. I have a feeling it got something to do with Precision Boost Overdrive. There are two different ones. Precision Boost 2.0 is just part of the package. That's something that overclocks or underclocks the CPU to keep it safe. So Precision Boost Overdrive, that's something that overclocks your CPU. Another point of concern is VRMs. They're not powerful enough and Precision Boost knows about it. So it could result in Cinebench score because it's underclocks all the time to keep it safe. Now the Windows is just frozen. And guess what? I'm not even pushing it. Oh goodness. Dynamic V-Core. Minus 0.2. I just can't find that load line calibration and overcurrent protection setting. This gotta do. So it doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't want to go into Windows. Precision Boost Overdrive is broken here. This is the slowest board I've ever had. But I'm gonna touch Precision Boost Overdrive. I'm gonna, just gonna let it stay. I'm gonna change our memory. Infinity Fabric Frequency. Up to 1600. I'm like really frustrated right now. Clock Ratio. 40. XMP Profile. And that's it. In idle, the RMs are sitting around 43C. Temperature 79 degrees, 80 degrees Celsius. VRMs are hitting around 47. Hmm, not bad. MOSFETs are 49. Chokes are 51. 1617. V-Core was hitting 1.5. No wonder we are so hot. Now it doesn't want to post. It's insane. So the multiplier right now is 4.0. Let's change to... 4, 2. Frequency is 4042. Chokes are at 53 Celsius. And the score is 1613. Nothing has changed. If you want to slide in a new processor from the 3000 series, you can do it. Can you overclock it? No. There's Precision Boost 2.0 and the Precision Boost Overdrive. Precision Boost 2.0 is in charge of the VRMs and the temperatures. So better cooling, you'll get more frequency. Better VRMs, you'll get more frequency. That's how it works. But it's not over yet though. Check this out. Do you see this? This is the cheapest board you can buy. Gen 4. You know what it means, right? This is the only card, well, one of two cards on the market that could support Gen 4 PCI Express. Everything is set to default. PCI slot configuration, Gen 3. We are running 3D Mark PCI Express feature test. Bandwidth, 13.8 gigabits per second. That's 3.0, Gen 4. See if it starts at all, okay? Got the picture. And BIOS is claiming it's 4.0 enabled. Motherboard for 40 bucks. I'll wait, I've been waiting all day. 23. This is $40 motherboard, 40 bucks. Running PCI Express 4.0 for 40 bucks? X570 chipset boards cost over 200. For 40 dollars you can get PCI Express 4.0. This is next level, frankly, CPU doesn't overclock. It, do, it just doesn't work. CPU doesn't overclock, but the PCI Express 4.0 works. AC turned on. Great. I guess the main takeaway here, if you're shopping for Ryzen 5 3600 or 3600X, just like this one, and you don't need all the features that X470 or X570 chipsets provide, get a chip board. Just don't overclock. Hmm. Next up is 2600X and 3600X comparison and motherboard mashup. Stay tuned and subscribe with the bell and stuff and like or dislike if it's it. And one more thing, if there's something you would like us to do with this setup, with this motherboard, with this CPU, with this GPU, together, not together, let us know in the comment below, okay? This is George with George Tech, subscribe for more. Like, dislike, subscribe, bell, comment, don't comment, like it, share. So much work.